Hello, I hope you're well. I thought today I'd do something different, give you an introduction to subtractive synthesis. There's a bunch of different synthesizers that we could use for this. I've picked a free software VST. I'll put a link down below. The main reason I've picked this one is it's very standard uh, in those features that it does have. It's got a really nice clear interface and it sounds pretty good. The first thing that we'll look at is the oscillator. Now an oscillator is simply a circuit that creates a waveform. This is an example of a waveform. This is a triangle wave. So it starts at the crossing point here. Uh, it rises to a certain level, drops down below the, the zero line to a negative level and then comes back up. And at this point here where it crosses the line again, it comes back to the beginning of the waveform. So that is a single cycle. The first type of waveform we've got is a triangle wave. And this synth, as well as having a square wave or as a, an oscillator choice or an oscillator one as well, also has a shape control. So if I pick triangle again and I change the shape, it alters the sound slightly. And what that's doing in this instance is giving us the chance to slip between a triangle wave and a sawtooth wave. If I pick a square wave and use that shape control, What that's doing in this instance is changing the pulse width of the waveform. And basically all that does is changes the ratio between the thick part of the top of the wave here and the, the part of the bottom of the wave here. So you, you end up with a misshapen square or, or what's called a pulse wave. That's the basic oscillator. The synth has two oscillators. The second waveform or second oscillator uh, has similar choices. You've got uh, a square wave, a pulse width wave, uh, sawtooth wave and triangle again and you can detune that waveform uh, from the the pitch that the first one is is playing at so if I play my uh, second oscillator alongside the first oscillator in this instance the two are detuned from each other uh, I can bring this one back to the same tuning as the first oscillator So basically you've got two sounds going at the same time. Now there's a couple of other parameters that we've got here as well, uh, which tie in with the second oscillator. The first of these is ring modulation. So if I check ring modulation and turn down the first oscillator, you've got a very discordant sound there. And with ring modulation, what's happening is the waveform of oscillator one is being multiplied with the waveform of oscillator two. Now, just going back to my little diagram here, you can think of the, the waveform in terms of values. So this line here represents zero and this point here represents one. And between zero and one, you've got various different gradual numerical values. So 0.5 would be here. If at every stage of the, the wave cycle, you multiply the value that you've got on this wave with the value that you've got on the, the wave going through oscillator two, you end up with a new waveform. And that sounds kind of like this. Uh, so if I detune uh, oscillator two, the values of the two waveforms coincide in different uh, ways to give you different sound. The other control that we've got here is sync. This is where the two waveforms both playing together and when oscillator number one reaches the end of its cycle, regardless of whether oscillator two has also reached the end of its cycle, this one will restart. So you end up with halfway through a wave and then it chops back down to the, the beginning of the waveform. And sync is it's best sort of heard if I change the pitch of one oscillator with respect to the other. To give you a, a good example, I can apply a pitch modulation to one of the waveforms. And you get that sort of high pitched whistling as the, the waveforms change. Next thing that we can look at is, as I say, pitch modulation. If I turn down oscillator two, and we'll just go to oscillator one, we can start looking at this control panel here. So I've checked pitch modulation of oscillator one, and I'm going to use to start with an LFO. 
to control the pitch of oscillator one. Now LFO just stands for low frequency oscillator. An LFO is very much like one of these audio oscillators, but the oscillations take place a far slower rate than audio rate usually. There we go. And I can increase or change the rate of the oscillations on the LFO. Now, as with the audio oscillators, you've also got a change of waveform available to you. So if I can pick a sawtooth wave, LFO will change the pitch of this uh, audio oscillator in a sawtooth wave shape. Now, the modulation at this stage is taking place in a positive way. So the pitch of oscillator one goes up, drops down, up, drops down and that forms the same shape as this sawtooth wave. Now, if I invert the modulation using this button here, instead of the LFO going up and then dropping down, it will go down and then come up. The other way that we can change pitch is using something called an envelope. We can use this modulation envelope here. Now, modulation just means to change something. It's got parameters A, D, S, and R. Again, if we're looking at uh, this diagram in terms of time running across the bottom and a mount running up the left, A represents the attack phase of an envelope, D represents the decay phase, S the sustain phase, and R the release phase. Now, as I press a key on the keyboard, the parameter that we're changing with the envelope will increase, decrease, it will hold at a certain level, and then when I let go of my key, the release phase will be triggered, and the value will just drop back down again to zero. So we can apply that to pitch in this instance using the envelope here. So with my envelope shape like this, with a, a certain amount of attack, uh, decay, a sustain level, and then a longer release, you get this sort of sound with, uh, adjusting the pitch. There we go. And that kind of envelope uh, shape can also be applied to the amplitude. Now, amplitude is just a fancy word for volume in this case. Amplitude uh, describes the height of the waveform here. So this amount is the amplitude of a waveform. If I turn down the volume of my two oscillators, one and two, we can also look at noise. And this has got a volume level and a shape control. Now shape in this instance controls the frequencies that are contained within the noise signal. That's going from quite a, a low frequency noise signal, uh, which might be called pink noise, for example, all the way up to a very screechy kind of noise, which has got all different frequencies in that you'd call white noise. So the next set of controls on the synth is a filter and we've got choice here of the types of filter that we're applying. In this case, there are two low pass filters and one band pass filter. Filters basically cut off various parts of a signal in the low pass filter that is cutting off higher frequencies. It's not letting them through. So if I take a uh, square wave signal again, and I adjust the cutoff, what happens here is as I drop the cutoff uh, frequency down, various parts of the square wave get reduced in terms of their volume. So that would be the higher frequencies get reduced. The other filter shapes that we've got here are a shallower slope than this one. You can't hear much of a difference until you start using this Q value. Now this is um, equivalent to resonance on some other filters. So if we look at the uh, low pass filter, all of the lower frequencies on the signal are allowed past, so the, the amplitude of those remains higher. And as you approach what's called the cutoff frequency, the higher frequencies above that are reduced to zero amplitude. If you apply resonance to the filter, or use the Q value in the instance of this, fil uh, this filter, what you get is a spike near the cutoff frequency, and that sort of highlights a uh, a higher point of the sound. So if I cut off the frequencies of the f using the filter here, 
and then I apply the Q value or the resonance you can hear there's a, uh, a very particular frequency that's getting uh, amplified and the steeper the slope of the filter the more pronounced that cutoff will be so a four pole filter will sound sharper and a bandpass filter that cuts off both the lower and the higher frequencies and leaves the ones near the cutoff frequency. Once again, we can either apply a modulation envelope or an LFO to control the cutoff frequency of the filter. If we apply a modulation envelope with some arbitrary settings for the filter control, or we can use an LFO in this place. This control here, Unison, that provides more copies of the waveform and you can then detune those to give a fatter sound. So if I apply, apply three voices of Unison and then detune them slightly, you can hear the result. and increasing that to seven gives you an even fatter sound. And the last control that we've got here is the global section on this synth. Poly means that we can play multiple notes at the same time. Whereas by default, this synth is a mono synth. And this glide control slides the pitch between the first note that's played and the second note that's played and increasing the glide increases the amount of time it takes for that slide to take place. Legato mode means that the slide only takes place if two keys are pressed at the same time. By performing on the keyboard carefully you can create that slide manually or avoid it entirely if you don't press two keys at the same time. I hope that's given you a bit of an introduction to subtractive synthesis. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the comments. Thanks.